Hey, a pleasant good day, hockey fans. This video is going to be on the Seattle Kraken as we talk about the expansion team in their first year. As they might not have many wins on the book this year, I believe it's 25 at the current docket. But, guess what they do have? A crap ton of promise, not just because of Matty Beneers being a potential star in the making, but because of multitudes of other things as well. You have a first round pick, obviously, in all three, but they have four, count them, Four second round picks in this year's draft to use as trade bait to move up in the first round or draft very smartly with one of the best general managers in the game, Hall of Famer Ron Francis. Then you got one third round pick, two third round picks in each of the next two drafts. In the 2023 draft, they have three second round picks. So Francis is smartly building this up and stacking up on picks. Really love what he's doing. Really love how I didn't like Gabe Kapler in the Philadelphia, but I really like what he's doing in San Francisco. I didn't like Dave Haxtell in Philadelphia, but I do really... Oh, I hit the mic. Excuse me. But I do really like what Dave Haxtell's doing in Seattle. He seems to be running a good system. He seems to be building a team, and he seems to kind of be one of those Jeff Blashill types that you let grow with the team and see how good he can do. And I think he's going to do great things there as long as they keep him around and let him grow with the team. You got Jared McCann locked up, who's great for $5 million bucks. Uh, still 25 years old, so he might still even be growing as a player. He's not even... Um, he's been in the league for a while, but he's still very young, so that's very nice to have. Uh, depending on what they decide to do with Wenberg, they have him for the next few years. 4.5 is not bad for a guy that's a face-off good defender like Wenberg. He doesn't always give you <clears throat> 80 bazillion points on offense, but uh, at least he's a good defender. Um, when you have Schwartz, good veteran. Yanni Gord, good veteran. Jordan Everly, good veteran. I see exactly what Ron Francis is doing here because he's stacking up the picks. I don't think Seattle is going to take that long to be good, to be quite honest. Some people might think they will. I don't think so. Because they got some good young players. I also believe Cole Lind is kind of this diamond in the rough guy that's just taking longer to develop. And I believe at one point he will be an NHL player. Whether that is like a consistent NHL player, not an up and down. Whether that is with Seattle or not, that will remain to be seen. Um... Obviously, you got to make decisions on guys like Geeky, guys on the, like Donato, guys like Daniel Sprong, who if I'm them, I would keep around because we already saw in um, Washington, if he plays up a lineup, he actually is kind of one of those Connor Sheary types that really does produce well, So, and he has a really good shot. I would honestly just keep him around on the cheap. He's still only 25 years of age. And then Carson Kuhlman. Alexiak, he got locked up on defense. Adam Larson, he got locked up on defense. Vince Dunn, you got locked up at least until after next year. And then he's an RFA, so you still got him kind of locked up in a sense of that. And then Susie, somebody that's been in trade. Rumors why? I think he's one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. I don't know, but he has been. Uh, Hayden Flurry, a guy that's an RFA. I wouldn't be surprised if he's traded just because he seems like a perfect guy for Francis. Not because I don't think Hayden Flurry can be a good player at some point. It's more, he seems like a perfect guy for Ron Francis to add those second, third round picks for again and keep just adding picks. Uh, Borgen's a pretty good player. He came over um, from Buffalo. I liked him in Buffalo. He plays kind of a just simple, keep it simple, stupid game, and it's nice to have a couple of those guys around uh, your team. He's still learning and growing, uh, so he makes some of the uh, young in the league mistakes, but you expect that. Uh, and then, well, Dark Pouillot's more for uh, minors. And then Kale Flurry, he's a guy that's interesting because Kale Flurry was obviously supposed to be a much better third round. At some point, it looked like he was kind of a third round steal for the Canadians. And then it kind of just never manifested to that, but he was playing really well for the Charlotte Checkers this year. And saw limited time in six games with the Kraken. Maybe next season will be a year that you can see Cal Flurry as a depth guy and then work his way up from there. And then maybe by age 25, he's 23 now, he can be like that sixth defenseman or consistent seventh defenseman that if somebody goes down, he's the immediate guy in. And then continue to work his way up from there. He's taken longer than expected, but he did play great for the Checkers this year. So, um,. With the talent, overall talent level he has, if he can kind of become more consistent, I think he could still put it together. Uh, goaltending is obviously the big thing for this Kraken team. Uh, what are they going to do in net? <clears throat> because in net, 
you got uh, Chris Dreger and you got Phil Grubauer, two goaltenders who I believe are actually good goaltenders, just not good this season. Um, but part of that also goes in with you're an expansion team that's the team figuring out who everyone is. Uh, the defense has um, not until kind of current moments kind of gelled fully. So I think that all plays into um, the goaltender stats as well because goaltenders have to rely on their team as much as they have to rely on just their overall skill set, obviously. So um, I'm not tripping too much over that because Dreger, I think uh, he, you only have him for 3.5. So at the very least, if you want to ride with him, then you can save money and move Groovy because I guarantee you, even at $5 million, even after this year, because five point well, six about five point nine for a goaltender that has the ability of Grubauer, especially when you put um a better defense. So I don't think Edmonton would necessarily be the best team for Grubauer to go to. But 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 if you put like a team that needs him that has a more complete defense surrounding, like for example, I guess if Flurry doesn't stay with Minnesota and they want to still have a great duo there, and not just for whatever reason have Cam Talbot ride it, um. You go five point nine million with him, and then you have a very good duo there. If I'm them, though, I would just keep Flower. But that's just an example, just based on the fact that they have a very good defense, and I think he would fit there. But I do think Ruby and Drager, you can just ride them because I do think eventually, once the defense gets better, they're going to get better. And both of them have shown in great defensive systems that they are able to be a great goaltender and make some key big saves for you. I don't think Chris Drager's a guy that's going to be like. Eager to start and ever and saving games for you, or Gruby was that at times uh, in the past, but it's not like he's usually that type of goaltender. He's just a very solid goaltender and very good one when at his best. So I think as his team continues to form, uh, they're going to see more guys uh, get better and better over time. They also have Luke Henman, uh, who got signed to his ELC. It would be interesting to see how he develops. Uh, Dennis Shalowski, uh didn't do fantastic in the minors, but obviously he's a young guy that's been all around the boat and just hasn't been able to find it yet. Maybe you could find a diamond in the rough uh, out of him, kind of high, um, the low ex uh, reality, but maybe you can find a diamond in the rough out of him. Joey Decord, honestly, I like as a goaltender. I just think he's one of those slow developers until he becomes a backup at like 27, 28. Um, and then, uh, Ryan Witherton is going to be ways away, the 67th pick of 2021. Uh, Riker Evans, though, I don't know how far he actually is away, because 35th in 2021, and he already, for Regina, seems like he could play in the freaking NHL tomorrow. So, I mean, like, the way that this guy has progressed... Uh, 11 points, 31 points, 28, minus 19, minus 12, minus 4, then plus 9 this year, 96 penalty minutes, so he beat the living crap out of anybody, too. Uh, 14, 47, 61 points. And also, watching on on, on uh, hockey TV, um, and now also on this thing that my dad got where we get all the um, stations, uh, he's a... I mean, he might end up being a draft robbery, let alone steal. I mean, if you watch him play, I mean, you can go sometimes find the highlights, lowlights videos, but if you're able to find, I guess, replay games or whatever of Regina, if you watch him play, it's like his offensive ability combined with the fact that he can just knock somebody into the next century when they're entering the next zone is absolutely ridiculous for a dude that's only 5'11". And 189. Imagine as he continues to grow into his body and still play with that zero fear, what Riker Evans can become. Uh, that He, to me, might end up being one of their top two freaking defensemen. And, I mean, that's not even a big breaking news when you pick a guy at 35 because that's almost the first round. But I don't know if people expect that high of expectations. He looks that good. Um, Witherton is the guy, the second guy that I'm the highest on with them. Um, uh, but we'll see what happens with their prospect system. When it comes to their goaltender, um, Semyon, uh, I always mispronounce his name, but Vazovo, um, he was the sixth round pick in the MHL. He kicked behind and did very good in the playoffs for his team, Topar Ufa, as well. 
Um, he also played very good for Topor last year, just did not have a good postseason. So this year he bounced back in the postseason and did have a very good postseason. Um, so for Semyon, it's good to continue to see that development, but he's still millenniums away. He's 19 years of age playing in the MHL, hasn't even seen the KHL yet. So, yeah, I would say don't expect much from him in the near future, but potentially in the future, could he be a guy that's at least a platoon guy or if not the starter? Yeah, for starting that good in the MHL, uh, some guys have developed into that, and then other guys haven't been as good. But if you are turn into more of a Sorokin rather than a uh, Morozik coming from overseas who's solid but not the best because of his over-aggressiveness, then yeah, you can still be fantastic. Even if you turn into a Lankanen, who I still think is a very solid goaltender, so Chicago was obviously did not play a very great help your goaltender uh, year this year. They kind of hung guys out to dry, and I'm sure most of their team would even agree with that if I got the opportunity to ask them. Um, but when it comes to the Seattle Kraken, I think this team is set up for success in the future, and I think they're just going to keep being set up for success because of the multitudes of draft picks going forward. They also have Witherton, Melanson ain't bad, uh, they got Riker Evans, who I like a lot of them, Semyon in net. Uh, it will be interesting to see how he's able to do as he progresses and potentially probably next season gets a KHL look as long as everything's still happening over there. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please you subscribe above or down below. The easy to do is widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April to meet our goal. I really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Stay safe out there, everybody, and peace out. And go Kraken. This is honestly a fun team. For an expansion team that struggles, you're a fun team to watch, Kraken fans, because you have that competitive. For being a Flyers fan that the team sometimes just looks dead on the ice, uh, th this year, you guys are fun to watch because you have that compete level. That's why I think this team's not going to take that long because you have the Everleys, like I said, you have the Schultzes of the of the world. Um, I I just don't see it taking a ridiculous amount of time because what it was Schwartz with Eberle and veterans like that. Uh, even Don Scoy, who was a good veteran, um, you're. You're able to kind of, once you have, and Yanni Gord, who's a great pick, uh, you're able to have guys just continue to grow and take their time and have Matty Beneers be able to play with a guy like Jordan Eberle, which is a huge bonus for him. So I think they built this team smartly, and it's just going to get better over time via their draft picks and via Francis probably flipping some other guys for more draft picks. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and have a good day, and enjoy the rest of the hockey season. And if you're an ECHL fan, enjoy the start of the postseason. Peace out, everybody.